<laughs> Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about Rin, the next character on the Raid Up banner. The banner itself, because there's a little bit of a distinction there, as well as this little sneaky surprise, which doesn't change the fact that you shouldn't roll on the banner. And then the data mined or leaked or prophesied schedule or whatever you want to call it of the events that are actually going to be happening in the next few weeks. Rin herself just isn't enough to cover an entire video. So I was like, man, oh, I found this little gem. Might as well talk about it too. Okay, so let's talk about Rin first. She's a two star natural and everything I'm about to say will make you kind of think like, hey, maybe I shouldn't roll on her after all. And, and yeah, I, that's pretty much the verdict. But before we get to that, let's at least discuss her, give her a chance, you know? As you can see from her role, she is a support that stands in the midline, so between Mitsuki and Kokoro for reference. The position itself is fine, and at that point, it's more about what else you're running rather than anything else, so it's really hard to make a generalist statement here. So onwards to her skills, for her UB, she's got an AoE heal as well as a physical attack and magical defense buff, so that's pretty spicy. You can imagine where this kind of works, right? Like an enemy team that does magic damage with your Rin supporting a physical damage team like obviously don't think too much into it as long as the skill can be used for like one of these two reasons then just do it. Skill 1 itself is a very very straightforward skill magic defense buff to all allies within the range of 250. 250 isn't overly much but it does reach the back to like Hiaru and to the front I think up to about Rei. Obviously you want to kind of take this into account because it indeed reaches Shuri and Suzuna and this could actually help them out like quite a fair bit especially with what's about to come next which is the S1 with the UE. Sorry, let me spell that out. Skill one with the unique equipment. So you can actually see there that it gives a physical attack buff and a physical crit rate buff to all allies that are within that same range. That is really spicy. And I'm sure you can already tell why that's good, right? And this actually indeed makes her a lot more valuable than she was without it. However, this does affect our decision a little bit later, like as to, you know, how we should get her and stuff like that. Quick look at her S2, she throws acorns at the enemy. So it stuns for two and a half seconds, which is actually really cool because a lot of the stuns that I know have been like 1.5 five seconds so I think Monica's is actually only 1.5 seconds. Not really much to be said like really cool utility maybe like that Miyako can't transform into a ghost because she just like gets stunned for like two and a half seconds and then dies because of all that magic damage that comes right after you know those kinds of things. EX skill, magic defense. For me, I value supports that can live, especially if they're like full supports. Like Saren, eh, she's kind of supporty, but Rin, full support. In terms of this bond level bonus though, eh, physical damage, it is what it is. Like it makes her heal a little bit more, I guess, but from her, I, I, I care less about the heal and more about like, you know, the big damage. The action pattern is quite good. It's a lot of skill casting going on. So a lot of skill ones, it actually does that physical attack and physical crit rate buff. But again, only when she has the UE. Until then, honestly she's okay she's not really that great not really a priority on that note don't roll for her she's she's a two star first and foremost so you'll likely get spooked by her eventually furthermore she also becomes a part of the dungeon shop which is like the most farmable currency in the game like super easy conclusion right almost so there's actually a chance that makoto and maho are actually right up on rin's banner <laughs> Huh? What does this change? Well, if you don't have Makoto, this is your chance to get her. Maho, like, you don't really care about because you can easily farm her from dungeon. But if you're really serious about clan battle, then this is just another opportunity to get her. However, if you were really serious about clan battle, then you would have actually re-rolled for Jun and Makoto, like, for these last 10 days. The last thing to talk about here is that this banner is 10 days long. Like, relatively sure, like, we're on the accelerated schedule. It is what it is, boys. Save up. We are in this for the long haul. Now, let me talk a bit more about, like, the data mine or the prediction or the clever or whatever it is. So I snipped this off in the main discord. Clever dude did it for the memes, so credits to him. I've just anonymized him in case he doesn't want to be known. Awesome work. However, it looks remarkably similar to like the Thai release, which is actually on the same accelerated pace that we are on. So first of all, we have Rin's focus banner. Today also like the two times normal stage drops actually did happen. So with those two already, we're already two for two. And then after that, we've got the CB and then we've got the two times dungeon drops. Remember guys, two times dungeon drops is only two times dungeon mana. The drops itself, it actually comes from the pace pack. Quickly after that, we then have like the max rank cap increase to 85, which is okay, I guess. The whales do get further ahead. Diminishing returns in EXP does mean that the uncapped players are still catching up to the non-refreshing capped players, which is okay, I guess, to be honest. We've then got the Arisa banner, like skip unless waifu, then chapter 9 release. It also looks like the Hatsune event is actually starting at the same time as the Arisa banner, like which is great. That's like in a, a week, actually. Whoa. Remember, lots of farming to do, lots of shards, equipment, divine amulets, etc. You should be about like level 50 or level 60 to easily clear the event. Like but I said before, you can easily get this in a few days. After that, we have another Grotto event. Mm, okay, I need those EXP bots. The Ayana banner, I skip. And then CB2. Oh, that's actually quite... 
It's quite, it's quite a lot going on. All right, so here's my thoughts about them. I really, really wish that there was a 1.5 times EXP event before the rank increase or before the second CB. I think that this would just really help the official launch people give them that semblance of like catching up, right? Like I said about the EXP, it's massive diminishing returns. So somebody that might get from 68 to 70 using the same amount of EXP, this other guy might get only from like 80 to 81. So you can see that if you're a lower level, you're actually going to be getting more levels overall as opposed to like somebody that's at a higher level. That's what I mean by diminishing returns, which is why it's not really a concern if like, you know, the soft launch players also benefit from it. So in that regard, I wouldn't be like too fussed about making the entire event like useless for the older players. Honestly, I think it's fine. And you kind of do want to retain those older players as well, right? Guys, also make use of this Hatsune event. Get that Shiori up. She's going to carry us the hell through CB for a little while. But other than that, I think everything looks pretty straightforward, to be honest. One last note, I guess, in terms of banners, especially because this banner and the squished CB, like CB normally was like seven days or 10 days or something like that. And it's now five days. This all like kind of confirms the accelerated pace. And I just want to talk about that for a little bit. I think that the only standard banner that you should even think about rolling on is Kyoka. And if you're free to play, don't even look at her. Ilya, you kind of like must have five stars for her to destroy arena. If you're an arena player, no brainer. You get her and then you five star her, right? Yes, the big investment leads to a big reward of turning the arena upside down. Easy rank one. I actually think it's really feasible to say from now all the way to summer Kiaru. And then wait for it, guys. Da 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 to not roll on prefez. <laughs> oh, I'm sounding like a madman right now. Depending on how the banners are actually structured, you could actually wait two months and then roll on the New Year's Yui banner. Now, why would I do that? Because this New Year's Yui banner actually contains both New Year's Yui and Christina. So what you could do is that you could actually throw in those 300 rolls. And if you haven't gotten both by then, hopefully you will have gotten at least one and then you can spark the other. Mm, honestly, that sounds pretty good. The one thing that I'm not actually certain about is like, you know, in regards to this New Year's Yui and like this Christina banner, like, is it actually a prefez or a not prefez banner? I've had some people say that it is a prefez banner. So that means that the banner itself is actually at a 5% rate. If it's not, then it's only at a 2.5%. 5%, but like, you know, even then I think it's kind of worth, obviously there's always a chance that they're going to change it. So like, you know, if we skip like Christina's debut banner on the prefez and then this glorious banner doesn't actually happen, then like says always look into the future at your own risk. What a weird thing to say. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. I'm sorry I'm not coming out with like the hardcore content. I'm actually working on an arena thing, but like, oh my gosh, my life is like upside down right now. I'm also trying to work on like a clan battle thing, like, you know, for more about the management of the clan. Like, you know, you got your schedules and order of attacks and stuff. I don't think I've actually covered that yet, but that will all come later. But now that's the end of the video. So I'm going to have to leave you guys with a secret message. <laughs> Rin. If you guys could drop that secret message down below, I would really appreciate it. It tells me that you got to the end of the video. And what does getting to the end of the video mean? It just means that my hard work is actually being watched and appreciated. And it just makes me warm and fuzzy. So that's pretty much the end of the video. Like, subscribe, comment, and you know the works, guys. You already know what to do. So I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.